so I was harvesting myself a salad. Those um, Caesar leaves get nice and full and beautiful and sweet. And so as I was about to harvest some of this red leaf lettuce for the salad for color, it occurred to me that And you know I harvest with a bowl of water already out here so that um, those bugs can be drowning and I'll pour that out before I go in. Minimizes bugs going in the house with you. I went ahead and pulled that uh, perpetual spinach that was in the pot with the red okra there. These three callaloo. I decided not to top off any flowering tips I see on these just to see how they behave in, in the uh, planters. The um, aloe didn't come up. I didn't really expect for it to, but um, these are really doing nicely. I'm learning about Callaloo that it has a lot, lot, lot of lower branches that come in. And I'm figuring out how to treat those in, in order to yield the most greens from them. I'm learning that I might be able to go ahead and just let those grow out and serve me better as full leaves to to eat red vein sorrel back here looking beautiful my cucumbers are doing the most i knew that they would be these are my peas i'm just waiting for them to fill out now i still have a few more flowers at the tops of some of these again my cucumbers this is, this is triple the number of cucumbers that i would even plant in the yard so in my cucumber life. Making good use of, of my mother's day gift there. Um, these, these tomatoes are doing everything. <laughs> my plan is working so far to avoid, I have a system to avoid and or minimize blight and um, this might not be the time of year you start seeing blight issues anyway, but uh, so far it's working really well. I actually have an invention. And I know no one else has ever come up with such an idea. My mandarin is loving life, as is my Meyer lemon. It's greener than it has been probably in a year and a half. I still have new leaves, new leaves sprouting. I'm bleeding some of those branches up through the middle of the uh, cage there. End up caging your tomatoes. You're going to want them to do it early in the tomatoes life so that you can start leading the tips up through the uh, cage like you want them to go. Very correct tomato. There's another wasp that wants to play games with me. Oh, I got him good. Ooh, I got him good. Ooh, we ain't gonna have no babies. Orange bell peppers and my red bell peppers. I think I'll probably cut off the lower branches, mound it up, then top it off. Probably take it down to just a few inches, and then it'll have, and then let it fork out into two more other fruiting branches. This is the apple mint. I've never had le peppermint leaves this big. It's that partial shade is doing that. The partial shade is doing that, I'm sure. Red vein sorrel doing much better in a partially shaded pot than it is up here in full sun. I see webs all over this one. There's my red currant tomato. There's the verbena just as happy. We knew how that would work when I scalped her, right? Spin her around. I think I'll harvest this outer branch just for the sake of keeping it even. There's not one leaning out. Unless this is a leaning issue. It might be a leaning issue. Here's the other planter with Callaloo. See how this side branch comes out so much that it's almost like I have a whole nother plant there? I'm just going to let those do that. So they can teach me how Callaloo behaves 
in different containment and under different conditions. But yeah, we had that calorie last night, y'all. And when I tell you it was delicious, <laughs> when I tell you it was delicious, is my other red okra, which I can officially say that I believe has survived at this point. Oh yeah, something bit off leaves on it. I don't know if I showed you guys or not. I wonder if I should plant even more onions. I planted onions over there so many times and they're not growing. And these, uh, I guess y'all call them English walking onions. They look like they're not, they didn't root. I mean, this doesn't seem to be growing back any, but I see a couple of inches, but it might be the couple of inches that were already there. I went ahead and topped off uh, topped off the seeding tip of that callaloo I had. So this year I basically, let's round it up to 30 because there's still this random one here. I think this one is actually being attacked. I see a web so I don't know if it's spider mites or those white flies or both or either or. But this one is actually being attacked by what these white flies, things that uh, this sorrel, full sun sorrel is attracting, but it's still fighting them off. So shout out to you, Callaloo. See how it still looks good? I see some shriveled up baby leaves down there, but this thing is fighting back. And I know it's saturated, because when I, I showed you guys, when I water, you can see the little, all the white flies floating. You can see the ones that drowned over here. I don't know y'all, this callaloo is still good raw. That might literally be all I need. I put so many seeds in this bed and for some reason the seeds are not rooting. So I went ahead and took one of my velvet booty collars and put it here. And then planted another old, and planted a old timey collar to replace it over in the yard bed. So yeah, I just went ahead and planted another spinach in here. Yet another regular spinach. Because whenever they're done, I'll just plant a new one. What's it gonna hurt? Who gonna check me, boo? I topped all the seeding tops off. I should have left, I should have left one. Again, just to see how the plant behaves. But I'm just gonna pay, I'm just gonna go ahead and pay attention to the ones in the uh, planters and let them tell me. But y'all, these young callaloo leaves are not bad in salad. I put it like this. They're better than the perpetual spinach. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. Oh. Little Robin sitting in her spot on the fence staring at me. But okay. I have a little snow pea back here and two on the other side anyway. I put three snow peas in there when I realized those were going to be um, snap peas where you can't eat the pod. Straight up flowers on my patio tomato. Tomato in the smaller pot. See how these stems get? So strong. No cajun necessary. Particularly, now it did get tall enough for a steak last year. But just so you know, that's why I put two in a pot this year. And I also bury them deep because that's what tomatoes like. They like to be buried deep. And also lollipopping them. By, and, and in doing that, I mean I cut off the bottom branches down there. So the combination of those things help uh, help bush out your plant. Now a ch cherry tomato is different because since they grow in bunches, those bunches are bound to be heavier at the end of the stem and the main stem is, you know, not quite as sturdy as the patio tomato. But I wanted to try this. I got this from um, Nicola Super Sly Fox. I'm going to empty these two. I should have been started that uh, moringa over again, especially since it, it's the day it got hot enough for it to grow out here. Here are my bell pep, two bell peppers, and I am actually going to top these off 
like I did the tomatoes. Look at that in comparison. My uh, Chinese cabbage, I don't know if you can see it or not. Oh, there it is. My Chinese cabbage is coming up. It's getting shaded by the cucumbers, so it's um, making the conditions cool enough for it. These leaves now are nice and large, so that's actually going to give me a larger yield in general. I'm going to be coming out here every day for cucumbers and tomatoes. Here's the callaloo here. Since I pruned them, the side leaves have indeed gotten bigger, but it is ready for another small harvest. Don't sleep on these leaves raw because they're still better than, you know, than chard, perpetual spinach, malabar spinach, all the fake spinaches. <laughs> Callaloo is really good. And these leaves are really good raw, for real. Caesar lettuce only has a few leaves because I came and emptied that for a salad. Perpetual spinach I kept back here. I thought they, maybe they'd be good to have just for variety when I make my green juice. Need to lean this cucumber back. So it can train to grab the um, Let those train themselves to grab the cage and climb it. I know y'all just heard that bird just wasn't expecting me, I guess, came and hit the top of the fence. Either they didn't see me and got startled or, or firing warning shots at me, whatever. This row of peas along the fence the inside of the fence there and really you know I only need two oops, I only need uh, one of the French sorrel plant the red vein sorrel could have gone back there I wonder when rhubarb is ready to harvest yeah those leaves look a little better so yeah I wanted to show you this just to give you a closer look of what's going on here Look at all that. Oh, look at all that. All those little white fuckers are. So here are the two herb planters. There's a barrel pot and this old one that we're planning to eventually get a rip get rid of. I guess they're Egyptian walking on you. Uh, they didn't seem to be growing back. I may have Mr. Bring me some more. Uh, nothing else seems to have come up literally nothing else these things I believe are just something from seeds and birds dropped the very next rain I'm gonna get off my butt and actually plant my red vein sorrel along here and in between these hostas eventually replacing the hostas in my barrel here where I replanted everything everything that was here I replanted here and it looks like all that's coming here in the middle is uh, opal basil and I have some regular green basil here that's still not coming up uh, thyme thyme and parsley back here and I'll put some oregano over there cilantro here and I think I put something between the uh, basil and cilantro here, but I don't remember what it was. Anyway, the only thing that's doing anything is the pineapple sage that Mr. brought me and, but anyway, that's the extent of the herb pot. 